Welcome to worship. We at UCC Norwell are a Christ-centered, inclusive community called to ministry. No matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And we celebrate that you are joining with us for worship today. We believe that nothing can separate us from the love of God, neither height nor depth, nor angels nor demons, nor hybrid or virtual or in-person school, neither ambiguity or illness, anxiety or depression. Nothing, nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And so we gather. We gather to remember, to tell the old, old stories, to worship, and to pray. Today we are blessed with a guest preacher, the Reverend Bria Belim, who serves as Minister of Bereavement, Bereavement at the historical Charles Street African Methodist Episcopal Church. We celebrate her ministry and we prepare our hearts for a good word today. So let us pray. Powerful God, gather us in. From the stress of our daily life, call us to rest in you. Gather us in. From the layers of grief that weigh us down, call us to find comfort in you. Gather us in. From the slump of our shoulders and the heave of our breath, call us to find a deeper well of strength. Gather us in. From a world rife with injustice and foolishness, call us to seek your wisdom and holiness. Call to each of our hearts today. Gather us in. Amen. Moses was a baby 
Well, that baby Moses grew up, and he grew up to challenge the Pharaoh to ask his people to get free. But it said Pharaoh's heart was hard. And I think we need to talk a little more about that. Let's listen. Today's story from the Bible is about two very different people, Moses and Pharaoh. The story tells us that Moses heard God's voice telling him that Moses would be the one to set God's people free. Moses' people were slaves in Egypt, and they worked hard without any pay, without freedom. Pharaoh was the ruler of Egypt. He was powerful, but he did not know how to listen to God. The Bible says his heart was hard. What does that mean? Imagine that God's voice is water. When our hearts are hard, like these rocks, God's voice can't get in. When our hearts are hard, we can't listen to our neighbors. We can't even listen to ourselves. When our hearts are hard, we can't dream with God. We can't soak up God's love and we can't share it either. Our hard hearts do not stop God's love from being in the world. We're not that powerful. God's love still goes over us and around us just like the water, but we just can't soak it up. What if our hearts could be like these sponges, soaking up God's voice and God's love? When we're soft-hearted, we can listen for God's voice. We can soak up God's love and share it all around us. Our hearts get soft when we practice forgiveness when we listen to our neighbors and hear their truth, when we let the sadness of the world break our hearts, when we pray and listen for God's voice. It takes a lot of courage and strength to be soft-hearted. We might get our feelings hurt because we took away the hard shell, but being soft-hearted means we get to feel and share God's love, which is the greatest feeling in the whole wide world. It's what we're here on earth to do, to be soft-hearted, to feel and to share God's love, and to do our part to create God's dream of justice and freedom for everyone. Neighbor, it was good to be with you this week. Thank you for sharing your soft and brave hearts with me, with your family, and with all of your neighbors. Remember to be kind. The first reading comes from Exodus chapter 5, verses 1 through 2. Afterward, Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, This is what the Lord, Israel's God, says. Let my people go so that they can hold a festival for me in the desert. But Pharaoh said, Who is this Lord who I'm supposed to obey by letting Israel go? I don't know this Lord, and I certainly won't let Israel go. The second reading is from Exodus chapter 7, verses 8 through 23. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When Pharaoh says to you, Do one of your amazing acts, then say to Aaron, Take your shepherd's rod and throw it down in front of Pharaoh, and it will turn into a cobra. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did just as the Lord commanded. Aaron threw down his shepherd's rod in front of Pharaoh and his officials, and it turned into a cobra. Then Pharaoh called together his wise men and wizards, and Egypt's religious experts did the same thing by using their secret knowledge. Each one threw down his rod, and they turned into cobras. But then Aaron's rod swallowed up each of their rods. However, Pharaoh remained stubborn. He wouldn't listen to them, just as the Lord had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh is stubborn. He still refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning. As he is going out to the water, make sure you stand at the bank of the Nile River so you will run into him. Bring along the shepherd's rod that turned into a snake. Say to him, the Lord, the Hebrews God, has sent me to you with this message. Let my people go so that they can worship me in the desert. Up to now, you still haven't listened. This is what the Lord says. By this, you will know that I am the Lord. I'm now going to hit the water of the Nile River with this rod in my hand, and it will turn into blood. The fish in the Nile are going to die. The Nile will stink, and the Egyptians won't be able to drink water from the Nile. The Lord said to Moses, 
Say to Aaron, take your, take your shepherd's rod and stretch out your hand over Egypt's water, over their rivers, their canals, their marshes, and all their bodies of water, so that they turn to blood. There will be blood all over the land of Egypt, even in wooden and stone containers. Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord commanded. He raised the shepherd's rod and hit the water in the Nile in front of Pharaoh and his officials, and all the water in the Nile turned into blood. The fish in the Nile died, and the Nile began to stink so that the Egyptians couldn't drink water from the Nile. There was blood all over the land of Egypt, but the Egyptian religious experts did the same thing with their secret knowledge. As a result, Pharaoh remained stubborn, and he wouldn't listen to them. Just as the Lord had said, Pharaoh turned and went back to his palace. He wasn't impressed even by this. Good morning, UCC Norwell. I'm Reverend Bria Bellum, and I come all the way from Roxbury, the historic Charles Street AME Church, where my pastor is the Reverend Dr. Gregory G. Gruber Sr. I am delighted, blessed, and honored to share in this sermonic moment with you this morning. Thank you, Ashley, for this invitation and this opportunity to your lead pastor. Thank you. Will you pray with me? Loving God. Pour your spirit on us today. Speak to us today. Because if you don't, then how shall we know the way? So God, I pray for preaching power today that makes preaching just a little bit more easier. In your son Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. The truth to what happens when we unravel God's plan for justice. Beloved of God, I love when people say, you want to hear or make God laugh? Tell him your plans. And I'm not too sure as to why that is, but it is funny to me. Over and over, we as humans attempt to make our own plans. We plan to clean our living spaces on Saturday morning. We plan to work out three times a week. We mail plan, we plan, we plan. We plan, and right in the midst of us making plans our way, we tend to unravel the plans that God has for us, which is plans to give us hope and a future. But I'm sure that it causes God to not only laugh at us, but sometimes it may cause God to be upset. However, it is a constant reminder that there is someone who holds the ultimate plans not only for our lives, beloved, but also the ultimate plans for peace on earth. The ultimate plans for us to love one another. The ultimate plans of what it means to live in liberty. And most importantly, the ultimate plans of how it seems to live in justice. I am reminded in our scripture passage for this morning of when God's plan for justice is unraveled by humans. I am reminded of what God does to us when we think that we do not have to follow God's plans. But beloved, in this text, we we also see Moses and Aaron uh, attempting to keep God's plans for justice together when Pharaoh tries to unravel them. Uh, we see Moses and Aaron attempting to keep God's plans together for justice even when Pharaoh tries to unravel them. See, Pharaohs and his officials mock the plans of God that God had through Moses and Aaron and eventually we see Pharaoh's heart is hardened and God's plans still prevail. I've come to share just one truth this morning about what happens when we as humans or pharaohs of this world try to unravel God's plan for justice. And the truth this morning is that our unraveling of God's justice can lead to injustices. I'm going to say that one more time for, for someone who may have missed it. Uh, the truth this morning is that our unraveling of God's justice can lead to injustices. My brothers and my sisters, beloved of God, in this text this morning, we, we see how God gave Aaron 
in, in Moses' instructions to meet up with Pharaoh at the Nile and to make sure that Pharaoh knows that God says to let his people go. However, Pharaoh in his human ways, beloved, still tried to unravel God's plan and not let God's people go. If I had to make it plain for you this morning, I, I would simply remind you of this one truth uh, that when we as humans unravel God's plan for justice, we create injustices. And, and, and just as Pharaoh did not let the people go and they were not able to have fresh water. It's just like our world today, beloved. When the injustices of this world uh, have God's children, brown boys and brown girls bound up and not letting them go unless their destination is a grave, they aren't able to like these Egyptians to have fresh water. They aren't able to accomplish fresh dreams and they sure aren't able to reach fresh goals. See, beloved of God, when we do not follow the law and do injustices, we will see like we have seen these peaceful protests become unpeaceful. We will see the uprising and, and even more police brutality occur to those of color. Injustices. See, when injustices are still being done to God's people around the world today, when resources become tainted, when protection becomes tainted, when security becomes tainted, we create injustices. We unravel God's plan for justice. Uh, whenever there are injustices, it, it reveals to us that God's plan for justice has been unraveled. Help us, God. The, the disobedience and injustices of this world affects everyone they affect each and every one of us but but beloved of god i i rest assured this morning that god still speaks to us yes god still speaks to us as co-creators as co-creators not only of this world beloved but as co-creators of peace as co-creators of love and as co-creators and co-keepers of God's justice, co-keepers of helping this thing called God's justice stay raveled. I'm reminded in the New Testament that there is no jewel, there is no Gentile in Christ Jesus, and we are all one. We are instructed to avoid creating injustices. It is important that we must always create spaces where justice rose like a river, a never failing stream. Beloved of God, let's work on avoiding this one truth. Let's work on keeping God's plans raveled and not unraveling them. Let's stop creating injustices. Let's stop. But let us keep working to ensure that God's plans for justice do not become unraveled. But I'm so glad this morning that just as Aaron and Moses were a team carrying out God's plans and, and God's work, that there are so many other team of examples that let us know that when we carry out God's work, when we carry out God's work of love, when we carry out God's work of peace, when we carry out God's work of justice, that God will be glorified. And I'm grateful this morning for Paul and Silas who let us know when we keep God's plan raveled and working together to, to bring freedom, that God will show up. I'm grateful this morning for the teamwork, the teamwork of Paul and Timothy 
that lets each and every one of us know that we matter and that we don't have to let anyone look down on us because we might be of young age. I'm so glad this morning of the teamwork of God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit that assures us that we can go on, that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. So beloved, I remind you one more time that we have to keep working to ensure that God's plan for justice does not become unraveled. Amen. Let's pray. God, our creator, God, our mediator, God, our sustainer, we come now praying for strength. We come now asking that you would grant us wisdom, that you would grant us power for the facing of this hour, this hour when we are challenged in keeping God's plan raveled. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour when the opportunity to, opportunity to create injustices come. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour too successfully be co-creators of love, co-creators of peace, and co-creators of justice. Allow us, God, to be driving forces and keeping your plans for justice together. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please join us in the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done. Be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And let us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved of God, 
We gathered this week with the youth group to talk about how they're feeling about all the decisions and ambiguity around schools. And they came up with these needs listed in this prayer for us. So let us gather together and let us pray. God of all wisdom, God of courage, we call upon you today. Today we lift up the whole of our education system. We lift up our children. We lift up our parents and caretakers. Oh God, where nerves are shredded and breath is short, be our breath, calm our nerves. For school boards, local officials and administrators, we pray for a wisdom deeper than our own knowing. We pray for a deep listening and a call to care for the most vulnerable among us. You are wiser than all sources of wisdom, and we ask that you speak to each and every decision maker. For teachers, O oh God, we give you praise for the gifts of our teachers and education specialists. We are grateful for their gifts, for their dedication, their creativity, and their pure grit. We pray for your hand to guide them and your endless creativity to fall upon them. Oh God, protect them. Keep watch over these, your servants, who care and teach from the smallest preschooler to the nearly grown teenagers. For our janitors, our counselors, cafeteria workers, for teachers' aides, for all who keep the ship afloat. Oh God, we praise you for their dedication and care. We praise you for their skillfulness. Let us not forget each other. Let us remember that all work is dignified work. Let us keep each other safe. For students, for our children and for children everywhere, we give you thanks for their eager minds and we pray that you hold them, keep them safe. Grant them flexible thinking beyond their years. We pray for those who are unsafe, for those without food, for those without access to technology or to listening adults. Turn our hearts toward them. Let us build a world together where each child is safe, fed, and loved that we might truly learn together. For parents and caretakers of children, O oh God, we ask for an endurance that only you can grant. We ask for wisdom. Help them to balance their load. Help them to trust in Jesus, whose yoke is easy and whose burden is light, and at whose feet we can lay down our heavy load. Each day, give them a single moment to take a breath and to rest in you. God, you are our greatest teacher and our everlasting parent. Hold each of us as decisions are made and plans are drawn. Hold us each day that unfolds with its ambiguity and its curiosity. Oh God, you are our anchor and our shield. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus, who lived for love's sake. Amen. If you are new, welcome. We are glad that you are with us today. Our community is alive with opportunities to serve and to worship. You can join our mailing list by texting UCC Norwell to 22828 to join our mailing list. Our COVID-19 fund is up and running. We are making disbursements to organizations and individuals in need of extra financial support. If you are in need of support, please send either of the pastors an email or see the link below to apply. Today, opportunities to serve our community continue to abound. We have given away nearly 400 washable and reusable masks and the demand continues as the pandemic continues. And so we need a few more mask makers. If you're interested, please call Lori Galvin and you can find her information in the weekly update. 
Our raised bed gardens here at the church are growing abundantly, and we are looking forward to sharing the results of our labor with Father Bill's place in Quincy. This week, our first batch of veggies was delivered. And so you can continue to join us in that ministry by bringing your extra vegetables to the rear entrance of church on Thursdays before 1 p.m. We'll gather those up and deliver them to Father Bill's. You can also help by signing up to deliver to Father Bill's in Quincy every Thursday between 1 and 3 p.m. You can sign up or find out more at the link below. Friends, we here in this community, even as we're stretched from one another, we are making an impact. We are loving our God, loving ourselves, and loving our neighbors. I see the heart of Jesus in you as you reach out to one another, as you make phone calls, as you write cards and deliver food, as you tend to the hurting world. And I see God in you when you ask for help, when you reach out when you're feeling lonely or disconnected, when you gather up your courage and you make a call to another church member and ask for prayer. I see God in you when you apply to COVID-19 assistant funds through our church. God is with us and in us in our strength and in our courageous vulnerability. Together, friends, we have donated around $9,000 for assistance in this pandemic. And just this week, we donated over 20 pounds of vegetables to Father Bill's. You see, God is meeting our generosity, and God always raises the game. God increases our gifts beyond our imaginations, sharing our harvest and sharing our love. And so as you donate to UCC Norwell today, may you know that your faithfulness will meet the faithfulness of others in our church family, multiplied and sent into a world hungry for bread, hungry for mercy and for compassion. And so let us pray. Holy Spirit, breathe on us your breath of life. Fill us with hope anew that we may love the things that you love and do what you would do. Bless these gifts, the gifts of our money, the gifts of the earth, the gifts of our labor, and increase them. Give us wisdom to use them for the building of your kingdom come, where no child is hungry, no elder is alone, and all are housed and safe. We're all, all are blessed with the presence of your abiding love. Bless us with the vision and the will to give ourselves to the work of your kingdom. It is in the name and the presence of Jesus that we pray. Amen.
out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all persons. Honor all creation. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the love of God, the life of Christ, and the power and communion of that Spirit be with us all. Go in peace. Amen.